welcome to our, what are we going to call this, our first uh, agency stakeholder meeting of the Oxnard, City of Oxnard's uh, local coastal program. Let's get this right because I got coastal people in here. Uh, hey, Terry, uh, come on in. Uh, local coastal program update. This is a, we'll explain all this and um, I just wanted to welcome you. Thank you for coming on your time from your various employers, I assume. We will not try to keep you here more than necessary, but on the other hand, want to make sure your comments and so forth are solicited and welcomed. Um, Oxnard will tell you the story, but in short, we've retained GrinCon consultants, obviously, and Jennifer Haddo is our project manager, so I'm going to turn it over to her to begin the meeting. Thanks. Great. Um, <laughs> Not that big a room, so hopefully everyone can hear me. But if, if you have any trouble, either online or um, at the back, let me know. And I, um, yes, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedules to come to what is our first agency stakeholder technical advisory meeting. Um, this is a select group of people that that have been contacted to help us move some of the, the trickier aspects of this forward to solicit your input, knowing that what we do here affects, you know, different jurisdictions, different agencies, and um, and ultimately the ability of us, uh, of our ability to have this uh, package of policies and, and the LCP program update move through the Coastal Commission process towards approval. Um, <clears throat> really briefly, and um, just to check, can everyone online, are the slides advancing for everyone online? While we're doing this. Um, we'll do the introduction slide because we can just verbally say that and then move on when we get there because I don't want to waste anybody's time. Um, like Chris said, I'm Jennifer Haddo. I'm the project manager for the LCP update. I'm with Rincon. We're the, the prime of a large, not a large, a, a varied and technically expert team that's been brought together uh, to assist the city with this. Why don't you try it? Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, they're coming up okay now. Okay. Yeah. Agenda? Yep, perfect. All right, excellent. <laughs> um, IT guy gets the big talent back. <laughs> <laughs> Still doing something. All right, well, anyway, I'm going to continue introducing. So I'm Jennifer Haddo. This is Lexi Journey, the Assistant Project Manager. In, in addition to RINCON, who's assisting with some of the technical work, the environmental work, we have David Cannon here from Everest International who is doing uh, some of our sea level rise modeling in relation to the tsunami scenarios and also the vulnerability analysis for the, um, the update with regards to storm drains and other infrastructure uh, considerations. And he's going to speak at the second half of this meeting and talk about what he, their team has done already. In addition, we have RRM uh, Design, who's not here today, but is leading the public outreach piece of the work and is helping to update uh, some of the policy work um, and is, is leading that and will ultimately be updating the implementation plan or the, the code portion of the, of the update. Uh, Rebel Coastal is also uh, contracted with the city to provide any additional uh, sea level rise modeling in relation to some of the work that's already been done by uh, the Nature Conservancy. We have an economic expert on, on the team, uh, Philip King up at um, San Francisco, who's going to assist with, after we get through the vulnerability analysis portion, with some of the economic impacts of, of sea level rise in particular. And then we also are going to be working with the UCLA School of Law, who is developing a model sea level rise ordinance, and we'll be coordinating with them to see if we can tear off that work uh, for some of our implementation plan um, updates. So I'm going to go back to the agenda really quick. Everyone was emailing the agenda. I uh, hope you've had a chance to look at it. Broadly, the meeting is broken into two parts. There's the general information introduction portion, which is it's going to be the first half of the meeting. Welcome. And um, we have then a technical meeting uh, in the second half after a short break, which you're welcome to stay for, but if you are not as interested in that piece, uh, you don't have to. Um, and at that point, about the sea level rise work we've done uh, using the Nature Conservancy's modeling and displaying it for the city of Oxnard in particular, 
the uh, tsunami analysis that's been added, and then the storm drain system vulnerability that's ever has completed. So while we're at introductions, we have a number of people in the room, and we also have a number of people online. I hate it when people do this to me, but I'm going to do it to you. Could you just very quickly go around the room and say who you are and where you're from so everybody has a sense of um, the stakeholders in the room, and then we'll, we'll go to the phone and we'll have the, the people on the phone do the same. So, Deanna Christensen, California Coastal Commission. Denise Venegas, um, Coastal Commission. Jordan Gray is also the Coastal Commission. Robert Carey, I'm the District Manager for the Coastal Commission. Yvette Lizia, Governor of Office of Emergency Services, Southern Region. Uh, Liz Against Watershed Coalition of Ventura County, which is the Integrated Regional Water Management Planning Group, and we're doing climate change adaptation work with us. Okay. Dale Carnison, Ventura County Sheriff's Office, Services. George P. Hanaka, NRG. Pete Martinez, City of Oxnard, Stormwater Management Supervisor. Gary Bass, I'm the Grant Manager for the Coast. Jim Baylor, Technical Advisor to Beacon. Lynn Krieger, Ventura County, Channel S. Danielle Carr, uh, County Harbor Department. Robert Hearn, City of Oxnard, Engineering Department. Daniel Ramirez, City of Oxnard. Angela Borsilio Allen, Ventura County Watershed Protection District. And then going to the phone. Uh, Brian Brennan, Executive Director, Beacon. Tim Murphy, AE Commons, Santa Barbara, Environmental Support to NRG. Chris Kroll, Coastal Conservancy. This is uh, KJ May. I'm with the uh, Port of Wainimi. So I'm the staff engineer attending for uh, Christina Birdsey. Is that it? Okay, great. Well, thank you so much again, everyone, for uh, taking the time out to do this. We're having click on it. Yeah, let me just click on that. Okay. Apparently you are working, but I am not. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, just as a quick background, I um, won't spend much time on what is in the past, we really want to talk about what we're moving towards in the future, but um, you know, Oxnard's current LCP uh, in 1972, you know, Proposition 20 was passed by voters to regulate the coast in 1976. The Coastal Act was adopted by the state legislature and the process of developing local LCPs began. Uh, in 1982, Oxnard adopted its Coastal Land Use Plan, and in 86, it adopted its Coastal Zoning Ordinance. So that time there have been various amendments over that 30-year 30, 30 period, but no comprehensive update has occurred. So this is the first comprehensive update since 1986. Um, as you'll imagine, we're working with a document that we're <laughs> retyping and scanning and things like that. Um, but the main point to take away from that is that really Oxnard, the local coastal plan or the program at this point is broken into four LCP planning areas. You're going to hear a lot about those today because we, we talked about them on the various uh, issues. They comprise the Grass State Beach in Mandalay, uh, Oxnard Shores, the area around uh, Channel Islands Harbor, and then uh, the Ormond Beach area. And in between uh, Planning Area 3 and Planning Area 4 are the Port of Wainimi, the Naval Base, and the City of Port Wainimi. So our LCP area has a big bubble in the middle of it that we are cognizant of and we want to be consistent with what's going on in those jurisdictions, but ultimately will not um, our policies won't affect those. Um, the, the reason behind the update and why we started, you know, many policies are no longer appropriate. There's, you know, something for an LNG plant in the original LCP that we're going to remove. There's multiple other uh, policy considerations that are just out of date. Um, in addition, the Coastal Conservancy had done their Ormond Beach Wetland Restoration Planning, and we want to make sure that the city's LCP is consistent with uh, that effort. The, the city's in favor of that particular um, restoration plan. 
Uh, there's also development completed that mm -hmm. is not uh, shown in the LCP, and we want to make sure that all of those areas are included in the updates and everything <coughs> set it a new baseline. Um, in addition, the LCP update was identified in 2005 during the 2030 general plan update. So this is a step, a ne the next step from that, you know, uh, city planning process, they updated their wider general plan. There are a number of policies that are applicable to the coastal zone. They mentioned sea level rise, and we're gonna, we're gonna take all of that as efforts and, and move them forward. Um, and that general plan was adopted in 2011. <clears throat> and Chris, if you want to add anything, then quite feel free. Um, I just want maybe just mention, and, and Carrie's here. Where are you, Carrie? Back. Is that, you know, a bunch of jurisdictions up and down the coast are really doing this as well. We're not the only city. We might be one of the ones that's a little further along, but eventually all the LCPs on the whole coast uh, are encouraged or uh, sooner or later required comprehensively updates. Fair, fair, fair statement? Um, yeah, I mean, no, re no requirements. No requirements, but, but um, strongly encouraged. Okay. <laughs> and then also with that in mind too, the when those comprehensive updates occur, the Coastal Commission Sea Level Rise guidance has, is out there, it's been adopted, and when those updates occur, that guidance will need to be considered. And that's what we're doing in our, in our update. Um, as far as funding goes, the city applied for four uh, LCP update grants between 2012 and 2014. Uh, Chris was eventually successful in securing the money, <laughs> and um, he received the city received uh, Coast Commission and Ocean Protection Council grants in 2014. I want to say last year, but actually that's two years ago now. Um, 150,000 was awarded in 2014, and the contracts were completed in 2015. And we began our efforts in September of last year, uh, so we're about four months in at this stage. Uh, in addition, the city's topping up required funds with um, development fees as we haven't needed them yet, but the idea is as needed. Is there any questions to date about sort of where we're at or anything that I've said? At this point, let's see things take over and a little better on the LCP. Yeah, I'm just going to briefly go over the LCP process. So I'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with it. Um, but it is required by the Coastal Act. Um, part of the act was to have local jurisdictions create these LCPs so that they can create policies that are specific to their area. And that way the Coastal Commission can go through these LCPs, certify them, and then that local agency has the authority to give coastal development permits. And because it's a requirement of the Coastal Act, it is the community's blueprint for managing land use, public access, and recreation within the coastal zone. So what is required for the LCP to get certified by the Coastal Commission? Well, it has to use the best available science to establish what resources and hazards occur within the coastal zone. And then once these are established, it has to develop policies that minimize coastal hazards through planning and development methods. And it also has to have policies that maximize protection, again, of those three things, public access, recreation, and sensitive coastal resources, such as ESHA and endangered species. And it also has to maximize agency coordination, which is why you're all here, and public participation. And last, because sea level rise is now a new hazard within the coastal area, because of the Coastal Act, it has to anticipate and adapt sea level rise hazards. So why are we updating the LCP right now? Well, as we said, we have to use the best available science. And the Coastal Commission has come out with two guides to updating LCPs. And like Jen said before, the last LCP was revised for, for Oxnard in 2002. So since then, we've had the LCP update guide, which the first part talks about how to develop and change the very general land use plan policies that have to do with Chapter 3 of the Coast Act, which has to do the resources. The second part is more specific in updating the implementation measures, so the zoning ordinances, talking about coastal development permits. And the second update that was adopted very recently in August 2015 is the sea level rise policy guidance. 
And that's more of a technical document that goes through the steps in which to evaluate sea level rise in a way that makes sense for an LCP and how to develop policies based rise information. So these are all the steps that are occurring within the Oxnard LCP update. The first step is to get the background studies done, see what's going on in the coastal zone in Oxnard. So we have the sea level rise mapping, um, review of the current LCP policies, and see if those still make sense. And then also ESHA mapping, the environmentally incentive habitat areas, and updating those maps. The second part is more of an analysis, doing the sea level rise vulnerability analysis, and then looking at different LCPs that have been recently updated, looking at best practices from those. The third is updating the LCP itself and integrating the sea level rise adaption, which is new. And fourth is public hearing for the Planning Commission and City Council, even though you can see at the bottom that public engagement is involved in all of these steps. And last but not least is to get the LCP certified. That's the end goal. Yeah. And I'll get back to Jen to talk about where we are so far. Okay, and also, um, we do have some time in this piece, so if you have any questions as the slides go by, feel free to break in. Um, hopefully it's all fairly straightforward to the stage, but please do feel free to stop. And same on the phone, if you have a question, please please ask. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of our, this matches our grant uh, schedule and it's just a list of all the things that we'll be doing with the city's um, program. You know, we've, we have a continuous task of setting up uh, public agency and technical outreach uh, and committees. We've already held two public outreach meetings back uh, in the last month, couple months of last year where we essentially launched the update process, told people what to expect, you know, why we were doing this, created a, a website uh, which that will be updated as things are, are available for people to look at. You know, we're compiling um, public interest lists all the time. If people, we, it's very interactive. If you have a question or a comment and you want to be involved, you submit it through the website and then you get added to the mailing list for every um, LCP notification after that. And we, we had decent attendance actually at both of the, the meetings. I'm, I'm hopeful that as we move through the process and we have more concrete things for people to see that in fact we'll, the attendance will grow and word of mouth will help see that. And obviously if you want to also spread that word, we'd appreciate it. Um, in addition, uh, we had already actually begun the sea level rise um, mapping prior to the start of this project and we have now finalized that. I have a, a draft hard copy here if anybody's interested in looking at it that has some of the um, pretty pictures and some of the text around it. The maps themselves have been available. They're right here to my, the combined hazards are right here in the room, but the suite of mapping that we did it, uh, back in the last quarter of last year is available on the LCP website if anybody wants to look at those. Uh, a small caveat to that, and we'll talk about it again a bit later because we're going to go through some of these maps. Um, that mapping is all based on modeling that was done by the Nature Conservancy. The city didn't create the modeling. We, however, used it and zoomed in because for the entire Ventura Coast, we, you know, zoomed into the city, zoomed into the individual planting areas to really be able to get what those models show occurring uh, within each of the the planting areas, both under, uh, you know, current or current. Uh, short-term, medium-term, and long-term modeling scenarios, which are 2030, 2060, and 2100 uh, years, and then with uh, various different types of uh, sea level rise based on the various models that are out there that are considered to be the best available science now. So we got <clears throat> what seemed like a lot of maps, I think it's like 100, we counted them, 100 maps that, that show in the individual planning areas over a time period with various different coastal hazards, like wave runoff and erosion and things like that, what the impacts to the various planning areas are. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about how we're going to use those later, but, um, but that, that step is essentially finished. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to have our complete atlas ready and up on our website in the next few weeks. We're, we're almost there. We're just finessing the language. So Just a note. So it, we have our four planning areas, but we also did the Port Wyneme and the harbor. 
and we call that planning area five, but it's not our jurisdiction. But all that is available to Harbor, the county, for Silver Strand, all of it being up and anything we have. The Port of Wainimi. Port of Wainimi, uh, by all means. Yeah. So, um, and if you, after this meeting, I'll say it again at the end, but after this meeting, if you have any, if you go back and you think about something, you have a question or you want to talk about getting the data that we may have or further information, please don't hesitate. You have Lexi. <clears throat> email address, you can email her. If you have mine, you can email me, or you can submit your question through the LCP uh, update website and we'll get that information to you as quickly as we can. Um, <clears throat> so that's essentially complete. Uh, the next step after today's meeting, really, because we want to talk about the uh, vulnerability work that David's team has done, is to take the risk assessments, the sea level rise modeling and all of that and look really dial into the individual planning areas and figure out what those vulnerabilities are, what infrastructure is at risk, what you know residential areas are at risk and determine what policies or what um, future needs those areas are going to have specifically to sea level rise. Uh, so it won't be a blanket policy for the whole city. We're really going to focus in on what the assets and infrastructure are in each of those areas and try and, as much as possible, have them be tailored to those areas. Uh, in addition, we're going to bring our economist on to help us quantify, possible, what the economic impacts of sea level rise is and also what the economic repercussions are would be of various adaptation strategies. So um, that's really our next step and we're, after this meeting, we're going to start working through that process with the hope of being able to come back to this group, you know, in the second quarter of the year, depending on how that goes, and reconvene with those those results and, and let you see what we've done and the methodology we've used and, you know, get some, some input on that before we present them to the public. Jennifer, can I, so that's task three. Mm -hmm. And what we're focusing on now, and this is where we are asking for your input and, and whatever, work with you, obviously, that uh, for the city, we're looking at our city storm drain facilities, city streets, for example, you know, anything the city has that's in these zones is vulnerable. For the county, there's obviously the county drainage facilities and in the county unincorporated pockets. Um, we have a, two major public uh, infrastructure power plants that serve a wide area, so we're kind of treating those as quasi-public uh, because they do serve the public. And then uh, at the, for private property, that's more the focus of uh, Phil King and his kind of looking at, you know, parcel data and valuations of property on kind of a more generic level uh, using parcel database data. So we're not getting into individual houses obviously owned by individuals, but we're focusing in, in the short run right now on the public facilities. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad emergency services is here because, you know, what we're to find out is what's what's an immediate problem that might be next time we have a storm, right? Or what's a short-term thing that might go into a capital improvement program for three to five years from now? And, uh, and then in the city of Oxnard, we have these capital, uh, we have our uh, master plans underway, right? For our stormwater drainage and all that. They're drafts right now, but it's still not too late, I think, that if something comes up because of this, we can still get those into our master plans for long-range planning. So it's kind of a, a good time in a, in a bad way, you know, to be talking about this stuff. The, the other interesting idea or interesting aspect is that a year of El Nino has actually raised the sea level by one foot right off our coast. So we are seeing a preview of what will, what will be the new normal at some point, you know, whether it's 10 years or whatever, but at some point in the future, this is the new normal. So nature has kind of given us a preview window here of what we should be looking at is actually happening. And uh, when El Nino goes away and the surf goes down and people move on to other things, they're going to kind of forget about this maybe, you know, but we shouldn't. So that's, that's why we're here. Right. And, and we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more about the, the various planning horizons and the types of, you know, there are very specific focus policies that the city probably should be thinking about for the year 2030, 2060 it gets more predictive, it'll probably be more general, and then 2100 this is information that the city needs to bear in mind, but I don't think we're suggesting we should be engineering anything for the 2100 
scenario, just given the state of the science and, you know, as you move out, the assumptions get broader and the predictions get, you know, less certain. So um, that's what we feel, that's basically the steps we're moving towards when it comes to doing task four, which is reviewing the LCP policies and programs that are in place now and starting to integrate, we're going to update them, not just for sea level rise, but as Lexi said, based on the best best uh, practices up and down the coast for other LCPs, and we, we started to gather, you know, just a, a library of policies that have been adopted in the last few years uh, in other LCPs, and we're going to start going through those as policies that we assume are can make it through the Coastal Commission process, so they are best practice. We're going to start compiling those, figuring out which ones work for Oxnard, which ones don't, and then start submitting those to the Coastal Commission for review in advance of submitting the package so that we can, you know, get an idea of what, what will work, what won't, and, and getting feedback early on in the process. And I think we've already submitted some of our ESHA work and have received great feedback on that, so thank you very much. Um, finally, we'll update the, the document as a whole. It'll go through the city uh, approvals process. And then um, we're at the same time, obviously bearing in mind that the commission has its own parallel kind of CEQA process that, that needs to be completed. Um, we'll be doing that as we adopt, we propose these policies, as we talk about, uh, you know, engineering solutions that may or may not need to be considered, conduct our parallel environmental review, put the whole package together, and then submit it to the Coastal Commission. Coastal Commission then responds uh, on those policies. So this will not have been the first time we still have seen the policy package, so you know, hopefully we can, we can address many comments early on, uh, resubmit, and then uh, achieve Coastal Commission certification in late 2017. So our, our target at the moment, uh, due to our grant, is about a year from now, we'd like to submit the entire revised coastal plan and I guess the implementation, the coastal zoning that goes with it, for its first initial submittal to right. the coastal yeah. schedule. That's pretty ambitious and we'll forward. we'll see and we'll try. Well, no, we're gonna try. We're gonna do it. <laughs> we're, gonna do it. All right. we're gonna do it. Uh, so I, I think I've said a lot of this already, but what we've done so far, uh, we use Rebel Coastal uh, has used the TNC Coastal Resilience Ventura modeling to prepare uh, sea level rise mapping with the various coastal hazards that were modeled as part of that effort, and I'll, we'll go through those a little bit later. Uh, David's team has done a tsunami and a drainage vulnerability uh, analysis with sea level rise, and in fact, we also have some uh, additional modeling that we're going to talk about today, and we have copies of those memos here, and in, at the break, uh, what Lexi can do is email that uh, memo to everybody who's on the phone, um, and then, um, we uh, have started our LCP policy review, and in fact, that's into the city for review at the moment. So we'll be submitting uh, a first policy uh, revision draft to the commission shortly uh, for some initial thoughts. And um, we've mapped our ESHA areas and have submitted those to the commission as well and received some feedback, and we're updating that at the moment in response to those. And then we have started our coordination with the various agencies and stakeholders uh, most of whom are in this room. And then, as I said, we've started our public outreach, and we intend to go back out to the public with what we've done in the next few months or so as soon as we have something concrete to present to them and um, get their feedback. Yes. Are you coordinating with the cities, the neighboring cities and the counties? So, yes. so we have spoken with Jennifer, and she, I think she was going to be on the phone today, um, but we've, we've spoken to her about what the county is doing for their LCP. I know we've definitely been chatting to her about the ESHA mapping and um, some of the IP updates, the zoning ordinance updates that are being done. So we're, yeah, we are. We're talking with her regularly about sort of what they, what she's experienced and gotten some ideas and some examples from her. And are Ventura and Fort Wayne also doing? They are not, as far as I'm aware, in the midst of any update process. So. We aren't, but what we are doing, uh, Martha Miller, who is RRM's project manager, is um, for our, or is managing RRM piece for us, is the PM for the Galita uh, LCP update at the moment. So we are 
taking some of her lessons learned in that process, which is about 12 months ahead of us, and integrating those into our process. So we're, we're chatting with not just the Ventura agencies, but those up and down the coast who are in this process at the moment. So, yeah. Are you collecting data in the city of Port Wayne, like you are at the, at the <coughs> Channel Island Harbor? And the we have um, used the TNC mapping, uh, and we have prepared maps for the city of Port Wayne, uh, but we aren't collecting any new data. We just used what, what was there. We figured it was it would look a little odd to have four things and then a big blank spot and then down the coast. So we, we did the maps for them, and I know it was it one of their counselors was at one of our public outreach meetings. He was quite pleased to hear that we had already done that effort for them. So, um, but other than that, we aren't uh, doing anything in the city. Um, so next steps this spring. So we're this is where we are at the moment. We are working on our sea level rise vulnerability assessment, and hopefully after this meeting. Uh, we can take that with the methodology we've used and move forward to start some of the um, planning area specific uh, work. Um, we are, have also started our um, policy updates and are moving towards that. We have, are in the midst of describing existing conditions, uh, which is a, a part of the LCP. We are developing new policies or adopting old policies to meet new requirements. Um, we are integrating information from other agencies as relevant and as available. I know we've been in contact with the harbor to see if we could get some marine information to inform kind of the back bay um, area. The harbor itself is not in the LCP planning area. It's subject to its own uh, plan, but the area north of Channel Island Boulevard is subject to it, and obviously the marine resources. So see that bridge as a barrier. So we, we've been, you know, been talking to Lynn about seeing if we can get some background information to inform that analysis. Um, <clears throat> we have reached out to the UCLA School of Law to start working with them on the model sea level rise ordinance. Uh, Martha has been in contact with them to start working towards um, incorporating some of that information into our IP. And then we're going to start our economic analysis. So we're right on time, amazingly. Um, with that, is there any questions kind of about this first piece? Uh, we want to move, at, we're going to take a, a 10 minute break. Hopefully the tech can function while we're stopping. But um, just to give everybody a chance, very warm in here if you want to get some water. Um, there's restrooms and stuff, just to show you where they are to use them. Um, but before we do that, does anybody have any questions on anything that we've said? Fairly straightforward at this stage. It's really what we're doing. If you want to talk about, what well, well, why don't you just give a preview of what we're going to do next? Okay. In case they want to, aren't sure they want to stay. Yeah. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go through the sea level rise maps, um, not in excruciating detail, but I am going to show them to you. Um, we're going to, you know, we will look at what we've done. I'll explain how the mapping works. Uh, if we want to zoom in and look at a certain area, and it's meant to be less presentation, more interactive. Um, and then David will give his uh, presentation on the vulnerability assessment that he did for the tsunami scenarios, which was separate to the TNC work, so it's work original to this project. And then uh, he'll also talk about the storm drain vulnerability. So this is 